Hey folks, welcome. My name's Becca, and I'm just one of many members here at Destiny Harvest Church. I'd love to start out by telling you a little bit about our church. First, Destiny Harvest is located at 1720 Belmont Avenue, right off of the security exit of 695, so it's super easy to get here. Also, this is a church about encountering God and discovering your destiny. Speaking of destiny, let's check out this latest message. Christ is living. 218, uh, uh, and I got down to about 180 real quick. Lost about 40 pounds. It's a blessing and a curse. I look all right, you know. But, <laughs> but, but uh, I, 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 it wasn't the way I wanted to lose it. Went to the doctors, and immediately after I told them my symptoms of what was going on, they immediately said it's Crohn's disease. First thing you have, Crohn's disease, exactly what you have. All the symptoms and everything adds up. You're losing weight, no appetite. What you're eating is not really staying down. It's exactly what you have, Crohn's disease. So I'm like, okay, all right, okay. I hear what you say. Thank you, amen. So let me go pray and see what he says about that, right? Uh, last week, um, I had a procedure done. and Anybody ever had a colonoscopy? So, I had a colonoscopy and, and, and an upper endoscopy, same thing, well, yeah, not same thing, but anyway, they, they gave me this, this list of liquids and things I had to take. You know what I'm talking about, Elder Ron, and, and it's, it's probably the most humbling thing an individual can go through in a 24-hour period. Help us, Holy Spirit. And, and I... I went through this praying so hard, God, please just take me through, because I don't want to do this no more. Uh, and I remember um, overnight, I was having some horrible, horrible pains. Uh, uh, woke up every two hours, just couldn't sleep, couldn't rest, pain just gripping my body. And I woke up that morning around 7 a.m., and I told Asher, you know something? God told me very quickly just to begin to pray for other people. Begin to pray for their healing. Begin to pray that God delivered them. And at the end of all that, pray for your breakthrough. So instead of me complaining about every pain that I had, going through all the stuff that I was going through, I began to write a list. I said, Ashley, let's write down some names. We got a little board in our house, and we wrote down about seven or eight names of people who were suffering with things, who had sickle cell, uh, uh, rheum rheumatoid, or whatever, and, and all these different things. We begin to pray and intercede on behalf of these other people, and we took about a whole hour praying. One praying about myself, one praying about anything of me, praying about all these people. And at the end of all that, we started praying for the breakthrough for my own deliverance. And what happened was this. I, I opened the blinds of, of my house to let some light in on a, on a Tuesday or Wednesday, after, Wednesday morning, and I saw the sun breaking through the clouds, and the Holy Spirit immediately, immediately said, that's how I'm going to give you your healing today. Just as the sun is breaking through these clouds, I'm going to break through in your life and give you healing. Amen. I went to the doctor, got the colonoscopy done, and I went through all that. They put me to sleep, had some good rest. Come on. I, I never had rest like that in my entire life, but that was the best rest beside a heavenly rest you can ever have in your life. And, and I, I got the rest done and then got everything done. And they looked at the, the, the sheets and saw all the stuff. And, he's, and the doctor came in and said, you know something? I know we said we had Crohn's disease at first, but you know something? What this says right here is you have a clean bill of health. There's no, no, no nothing on there, no, no anything on there. And, and I said to myself, oh, great. And, and, and Ashley had this, um, she, she was videotaping me and, and had these very... Uh, disturbing uh, videotapes of me waking up from my little induced coma. Uh, and and I, I told her, I said, she has a video of me. I told her, Ashley, you know, videotape my testimony. <laughs> and she was like, who, who healed your body? I was like, God healed, God healed my body from, uh, from, from, from Crohn's disease. And it was, so, it was so horrible. But I just thank God that God healed me. He, he delivered me wholeheartedly. I receive, I receive every bit of that healing that God has for me. And I just want to testify to you and let you all know that if you obey the word of God, obey what God tells you, God will give you some weird things to do. There's no way in the world when you're in pain, you're praying for someone else's healing. The normal thing for you to do is pray, God, deliver me. Take this cup away from me because I ain't trying to deal with that. But God says pray for other people. Pray for their deliverance. Pray for their healing. And in turn, God delivered me. Praise God. Just something I wanted to share. Uh, and, and kind of encourage you all to do that, but that's not my topic today. Anyway, so we go to what I am speaking about. 
We're going to speak and continue. Last time I came, we talked about worship and how and what worship is. And today we're going to speak a little bit more about worship and talk about the expressions of worship, the expressions of praise and worship. Let's turn, if you can, to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. And we'll start at verse 35, but let me just kind of start off an expression, if you, uh, if you know what an expression is, is an indication of a feeling, a spirit, or a character, uh, an art of communicating. When you talk about expression, when you talk about expressing something, it's letting someone else know how you feel by actually showing them what you're feeling. Uh, I can't show you that I'm happy if I don't actually smile sometimes. Is, is that right? Uh, I can't show you that I'm sad if I'm not frowning. I can't show you that I'm thankful if I don't say thank you. That there's an expression that has to happen in worship that a lot of times the, the, the body of Christ says, okay, you know something, by faith I'm worshiping. I don't have to lift my hands. I don't have to bow. I don't have to do all that stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and chill. I'll let everybody else do that, but God knows my heart. We ever said that? I've said that, so I know some people have said that. We, we say God knows my heart. God knows what, you know, he, he knows I love him. He knows what I want to do. So there's no need for me to express like everybody else does. There's no need for me to lift my hands in the presence of God. There's no need for me to, to bow down in the presence of God. That, that's for other people who are, you know, emotional people. I, I'm just going to stay over here and do me because that's just who I am, right? And that expression worship that some of us try to put on God is just this, kind of disrespectful thing saying, you know something, God, you're not really worthy of me to do anything different than what I do for anybody else. That, that's, what, that's when we say, and I know it's tough, uh, pension, but when we talk about expressing our love to someone, you, I, I look at my wife and I say this all the time, I think this all the time rather, if, if all I do for Ashley is get her flowers every time I make a mistake, or every time I do something wrong, or every time I want to show my love, she's going to have a house full of flowers. And she's going to get tired of those flowers at one point in her life. She'll say, thank you for them. I appreciate them. But very soon after, she's going to throw them away or give them to somebody else. See, God says this. God says, if you want to worship me, if you want to be passionate with me, if you want to be intimate and in, in worship with me, there are different expressions that you must, have, must, must live by. You must uh, exude if you want to get to another level. There's lifting of hands. There's clapping of hands. There's bowing down. There's, there's dancing before the Lord. And I, I know people go to, club, well, church people know what clubs, right? Uh, I know uh, uh, people that go to parties all the time, dance all over the place. They can two-step, they can duggy, and what's the, all, the, all the other stuff they got, you know, uh, cat daddy? They, you know, I, I know a little bit. I'm a little young, right? So they got all these different things that people do. But when it comes to church, worship is just... And the eventual, <laughs> and, 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 there, and there's, no, there's no other expressions of worship besides just the norm. There, 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 there's no bowing down in reverence and honor. We, we've lost that in the church, you know? We've lost that. There, there's no bowing down in honor. There, there's, no, there's no dancing in the aisles. <laughs> We, we, we laugh at the Pentecostal churches. I, well, I used to come from one, and, and they dance, 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 dance. All of them down the aisles, flipping over pews, knocking over people. That's what they do. You know? That, that's, that's their expression of worship. But when we come, and, and sometimes we get into these, 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 these large, large gatherings of people, and it, it, it just, it weirds me out sometimes. Nobody feels led to bow. Nobody feels led to do anything besides clap and lift. <laughs> they're, 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 is that all we have? It can't be all we have. That can't be all God's given us, right? We have legs. Some of us have rhythm. Some of us have rhythm, all right? But let me give you another definition that, that uh, uh, expression is. Expression definition says that uh, it is the act of pressing or squeezing out. Expression is the act of, of pressing or, or squeezing out. Here's why that's so important when it comes to worship. Sometimes you don't feel like 
worshiping. Sometimes you don't feel like praising. Sometimes you're not going to feel like doing anything else besides just the regular two-step. That's all you feel like doing sometimes. But sometimes you're going to have to squeeze out something different. You're going to have to squeeze out something more passionate than just a two-step. You, you, everybody get what I'm saying? That, that, that there, there's another level of worship, another level of, of expression of them when it comes to, to glorifying God that we have to break out of. And you're going to have to break forth and press and squeeze into that next level. Amen? Amen. Is there anybody here who, who's ever experienced kind of a blockage when it comes to worship? Meaning when, when, when you worship God, we, we're, we're, we're used to one thing. We're used to expressing ourselves one way and we stay in this box. And it's hard for us to press out of that box. Anybody ever been there? I had a, I'll give you a testimony. I was telling Ashley, God gave me one day, you need to start dancing more. Start dancing more. And I'm not a dancer. I ain't even have a two-step, okay? So I, I, didn't, I, I don't like dancing. I, don't, I wasn't a fan of jumping around. I used to go to some things and see people jumping and flipping. That ain't me. Okay, I'm calm, cool, collective. I stand still, I observe, and I clap and lift. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I do. Clap and lift, all right? But, but, but there's, this, there's this level now of, of, of worship that God says, I want you to dance before me. I want you to dance before me. I, and I, and I, it was a period in my life where I was going through a lot of stuff. I was suffering with this sickness, and God said, dance before me. You know why? Because God wanted to increase joy in my life. See, see, when you praise God, when you glorify God, it increases joy in your life. So God said, dance before me. Start jumping. Start moving. Start doing whatever. And I remember this one Sunday in church, the prayer was going forth and the worship was going forth. And, and I happened not to be singing this Sunday. And uh, actually I was doing prayer and the worship band was just playing, playing, playing. And God was just like, dance. So I'm like, okay. So I got, you know, back in the church, chill out. <laughs> My back. And I saw I get a little two-seven one. And, 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 and immediately, <laughs> immediately I started feeling some joy. Immediately I started feeling some joy. I, I was going through a lot of pain, didn't feel well, didn't feel like coming to church, didn't feel like doing a whole bunch of stuff, but I started moving. I started jumping, I started dancing, and God immediately filled my life with joy. And that's how some of us have to be. God is, God is saying, listen, if you want to pray, if you want to receive joy, receive strength, receive power, receive some, some, some breakthrough in your life, praise me in a different way. See, insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Some of us have been bound by stuff for years, and we've been doing the same thing for years. And God says, if you want some breakthrough in your life, do something different. Simple, right? Yeah. See, see we, we're, we're always saying, God, I want more of you. God, I want to know the level of you. I want, I want to go here. I want to do that. I want to do that. God said, do something different. Mm -hmm. Express me differently. Give me something more than what you're doing, and I'll give you more than what I've given you before. Amen? Yeah. All right. There's three things I want to go over very quickly. Let's read this scripture very quick. I'm sorry. Luke, uh, I'm, I'm, Luke chapter 18, verse 30, start at verse 35. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he now, drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they have seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. The first thing I want to talk about, the first point of worship, is preparation. 